Good day, learners. Welcome to quarter two remedial class. And lesson four, under the most essential learning competency, compare and contrast own opinions with those presented in familiar text. So by the way, I am Teacher Princess and I will be with you today. Are you ready? Okay. Before we begin, let us have this activity entitled, Spot the Difference. So from the title itself, we are going to spot the difference between these two pictures. Okay, look closely on these two pictures. Let us find and spot their differences. Let us begin. Oh, we have banana there. And two bananas there and three on the other side. What else? We have, look at the cookie. And I'm not sure what's that. It's color yellow. But definitely, I think it's not a cookie. Then we have the clock. Okay, different time. We also have the cabinet knob. Their shapes are different. Okay, then we have there some toys and some cup. Okay, lollipop, and there the cat is holding a spoon. What else? Oh, okay. Oh, are they different? Oh, let's find. I think they are similar. Oh, how about that one? Look at her color, grandma's color. And then the pin. Okay, what else? There's no pin. And then the frame, the shape of, is that tree? Oh, perhaps. Then socks, without socks. Okay, what else? Do we have more? Okay. Okay, <laughs> so that is our activity a while ago. Now, it's important to, do, to have this activity because in today's lesson, we are going to define comparison and contrast and identify its word signals. Number two, review different tools which can be used in comparing and contrasting. And then lastly, appreciate the importance of using comparison and contrast in comprehending a text and also in creating your own opinion or your compa comparing your own opinion with what is presented with the text. Okay, let us begin. What is comparing? Comparing is the process of looking at the similarities of two things or ideas with the use of appropriate transition signals. Remember that when we compare, we look at the similarities. Okay, everybody say similarities. Okay, so here are the word signals. In like manner, the same with, also in the same manner, likewise, similarly. And we have many more uh, comparing word signals. Okay, these are just a few examples. Let us now take a look at this. Examples. First, in like manner, both of them are smart people. Oh, let us identify where are our word signals here. We have in like manner. That's correct. It shows comparison. What else? Do we have more? We have both. Okay, if you underline both, then you're correct. Now let's have number two. Similarly, both sea and river are bodies of water. Okay, do we have comparing word signals here? Let us see. Okay, we have the word similarly from the word similar. Okay, and we have both. Very good. So when we have say both, the two of them. Okay, or, uh, okay. Now, let us move on to contrasting. Okay, if comparing uh, gives the similarities, when we say contrasting, 
this is a process of looking at the differences between two things or ideas with the use of appropriate transition signals. Okay, remember that when we contrast or when it's contrasting, we look at the differences. Okay, from the word contra, you look at the differences. And here are the few examples of word signals. We have however, while, in contrast, but, nevertheless, otherwise, yet, though, instead, on the other hand. Okay, now let's take a look at these examples. Number one. Jose is sickly, while Kevin is healthy. Okay, where is our contrasting word signal? It's the word while, very good. Now, what are those two words that are contrasted? We have sickly, Jose is sickly. So it's like Jose is... Uh, not immune to diseases, and he can easily catch colds like that. And uh, while we have Kevin is healthy, so they are being contrasted. Now we have number two. Yes, adobo is delicious. They like adobo. However, it is very salty. That may cause a person to get urinary tract infection. Mm. Okay, so let's find out where is our contrasting signal word or word signal. Okay, we have the word however, and we are talking about adobo here. Adobo is stated that it is delicious, so it's positive, right? Now, where is the other word that is contrasted with the word delicious? Very salty. Indeed, that's correct. Okay, so that is contrasting. Now we have comparison and contrast examples. A while ago, we only have uh, one or two comparison words in, in one sentence. This time, we will combine comparison and contrast word signals in one sentence. Let's find out. Number one, putong puti is a famous Filipino delicacy. The same with kutsinta. However, Filipino people better prefer putong puti because of the cheese on top of it. Okay. Now, do we have comparison word signals or comparing word signals? That's correct. We have the same with. Okay. Uh, how about do we have a contrasting word signal? Correct. We have the word however. Okay. So that is for number one. Number two. Likewise, jeepney and tricycle are Philippines' means of land transportation, but jeepney can carry more passengers than tricycle. Okay, let us find the comparing word signal. We have the word likewise. And what are those two things being compared? We have jeepney and tricycle. They are both means of land transportation in the Philippines. Okay, do we have contrasting word signal? Can you find it? Okay, if you underline bot, then you are correct. Okay, so what are those two ideas being contrasted? What are the differences? Jeepney can carry more passengers. Yeah, because jeepney is uh, longer than tricycle. Okay. Now, let us move on to the next slide. Here are the tools which can be used when comparing and contrasting. The first one, we have the concept map. Okay, I know when while you are using your modules, 
you see there different concept maps. So you can use them. Aside from that, we also have the Venn diagram. So here we have two circles and they are combined at the middle. Here at the middle, we put the, we put the similarities or the comparison. While here on the outer circles, we put the, of course, we put the differences. That's correct. Okay, so same with this concept map. Here we can put the similarities and here we have the differences. Or we can put the, uh, uh, here we have the differences and at the middle there, similarities. It depends because your copy can be put in here. You can put the similarities here at the middle and differences here out, outside on the outer. There you go. So, those are the tools that you can use. Now, is it important to compare and contrast ideas? Of course, we need to compare and contrast to identify the similarities and differences between ideas. Aside from that, comparing and contrasting will help us better comprehend the issues raised or points made in any reading passage. So you can be critical in looking at the similarities and their differences, and you will point out their, of course, their qualities and everything. Aside from that, you can make your own opinion and you can compare and contrast it with what is presented from the text. Okay, but how do we effectively compare and contrast your opinion? We have here three steps. Step one, you need to identify the similarities and differences between objects, persons, or ideas. Step two, you need to take note of the similarities and differences as well as the transition signals for comparing and contrasting. Remember, after you identify, this is your time now to take note of their similarities and differences with the use of transition signals. Then lastly, step three, express your own opinion by showing comparison and contrast. But remember, you have to support it with facts and evidence through the text presented. Of course, you have to do your research. You need to back up your idea or your opinion with facts and some evidences. Okay. It's activity time. Okay. So we have here a text entitled Our Heroes from Different Times. Okay. We have here guide questions before you proceed to the reading text. What is the title of the article and what is it all about? Number two, who are the different heroes mentioned from the article? Okay, I want you to bring out your paper and pen and try to find the answers to these two questions. Okay, once again, prepare your paper and pen. Okay, I guess you're ready. Let me read this text. Our heroes from different times, Raha Sulaiman and Jose Rizal were brave heroes or Filipinos who, who lived in different times, but died as heroes for the same cause. Both Sulaiman and Rizal fought against the Spaniards' oppression and died in their hands. Sulaiman fought through this sword while Rizal fought through his pen. These two noble Filipinos fought for freedom. Through history, their actions awakened our consciousness as Filipinos and the importance of celebrating independence. But what made them heroes? Is it because of their death in exchange of our freedom? For me, 
They are heroes because of their will and courage to put the welfare of others above their own. This is a perfect example of Bayanihan spirit, which Filipinos are internationally known for. We help and support one another even in times of crisis by setting aside our differences to put the welfare of others first. In this time of pandemic, our modern-day heroes who have a strong sense of Bayanihan have emerged. Despite the fears of uncertainties, our modern hero, uh, modern day heroes are health workers, are working to give medical treatments to people experiencing both COVID and non-COVID related cases. In addition, our soldiers, police, and even the community volunteers go out and distribute relief goods to the families affected by the community quarantine despite the threat of the coronavirus. Like our heroes who dedicated themselves for others, uh, so do our modern day heroes. I believe that being a hero is not about dying, but rather it is about living for something. It is about putting others first above our own. In times like this, our modern-day heroes serve are always working to help others until we are be, uh, to be free from this global health crisis. Okay, now we have here guide questions as you compare and contrast the ideas presented from the text and your own opinion later on. Number one. What do we mean by heroes of the past and heroes of today? What are the attributes or characteristics of heroes of the past and modern heroes of today? So we have the past and we have the uh, modern heroes. What do heroes of the past and heroes of today fighting for? Number four, what does it mean to become hero of the past and hero of today? And lastly, in one paragraph, compare and contrast your own opinion from the idea presented in the text. Okay, so uh, after this class, I want you to take note of the following guide questions. As we have here a concept map, you can use to compare and contrast or to take note the heroes of the past and heroes of today. So remember the three steps, you have to identify the similarities and differences. Number two, you have to take note of their similarities and differences and use compar comparing and contrasting signal words. And lastly, you have to write down your paragraph and back it up with evidences. Of course, you have to do that by doing your research and reading. Okay, so uh, you may take screenshot of this so that you can remember. Step one, two, and three. Okay, all right. So we are done with our topic for today. Do you have any question, clarification, dear learners? Okay, so if none, let us have a quick summary or a quick short, a uh, quick review. So today we tackled about comparing, which is the process of looking at the similarities of two things or ideas with the use of appropriate transition signals. Okay, we also tackled about contrasting, which is the process of looking at the differences between two things or ideas with the use of appropriate transition signal. And what is the importance of comparing and contrasting? We need to compare and contrast to identify the similarities and differences between ideas. Comparing and contrasting will help us better comprehend the issues, race, or points made in reading passage. Okay, 
So I guess that would be all for today. Thank you for listening. And again, I want you to send me the answers on the questions presented a while ago. So once again, this is Teacher Princess, your teacher for today. Goodbye.